itchy, itchy back. Hi guys, uh, I'm filming this video from work again. It seems to be the only time I actually have um, to do videos and things is when I'm in my night job, so uh, excuse the decor. This uh, is a, um, a video request from Luna Wolf Maiden. Uh, she, ugh, I'm getting all my words mixed up and I only want to do this in one video so you'll have to excuse me. It's been a very very long day and we had a really big aftershock today like a 5.2 so I'm still really on edge so you'll just have to excuse me and I'll muddle through the best I can. So she requested that we did a video on taxidermy and I noticed that Cat and Aqua also talked about bones as well. Um, I can't remember what the original like request was, I know that it was taxidermy. Um, I guess it had bones in there as well, so I will talk about that as well. Um, and this is a really interesting topic and I don't think it's been done here on YouTube before, like in a, in a, um, a collab channel, so um, kudos to you. Okay, so taxidermy. I am definitely not against taxidermy if it's applied in the right circumstance and by the right circumstance um, I mean what I deem to be the right circumstance. You know, a lot of us own animals, a large proportion of us own animals and I for one am extremely in love with my animals, um, each and every one of them, even the rabbit. And I've had to have animals put down in the past and I know how absolutely devastating it is and how much guilt you feel and how crushed you feel and how much you grieve. I mean. The last animal that I had to put down was actually at the beginning of the year and it was one of my horses. I used to have four, four horses and I had my little warty pony put down. He had health issues and he, well he actually had more mental issues than he had health issues. Um, he was going to the glue factory a few years ago and I, I basically um, saved him off the meat truck. So anyway that's a whole other video but I had to have him um, put down and it took me six months to come to the realisation that I had to do it for his own benefit. It still didn't make it any easier and it was horrific and I'm still very, very upset over it. But I know how upsetting and grief stricken you are when you lose an animal that you've had right from when they were tiny little babies and you've seen them, you know, go through the terrible twos and and you know see them grow up and become that very, very close companion. Um, that you cherish and you know I've had two dogs put down um, you know since I've been an adult since I've been independently owning you know owning pets and I have had them both cremated um, I still have the ashes I cannot bear to part with their ashes and so I get why people would want to do taxidermy in my job in my day job I work as an, an um, home-based support worker for mainly elderly people and I mean, basically I go into people's homes and I assist with showering, I do a little bit of physiotherapy, um, you know, I run errands, take them to doctor's appointments, do grocery shopping, provide some companionship, um, assist with meals, you know, meal preparation, medications and things like that. And I have some clients who literally, you know, do not have any family which is very sad and you'd be surprised at the amount of people that are very much alone and they don't have family and so if they have animals their animals very quickly fill that void and when that animal goes it's extremely devastating and it's I mean you grieve for them like you would if it was a you know a child or a spouse or whatever so I can definitely understand, you know, people wanting to hold on to something physical, like a physical reminder of their very, you know, their much loved pet, um, especially if they live on their own, because I see a lot of clients that live, you know, on their own and, and are very, very lonely. And, you know, it's, if they have, you know, their pet preserved, it's like that pet is still with them and they can still talk to it and they can still stroke it and they can still feel that, that connection. Would I ever do it? I wouldn't do it for a pet. I think that would just be a little bit too macabre for me. Um, like I said, I have my animals cremated. Um, and, you know, my husband thinks that's creepy enough. But, not that they're getting cremated, but that I keep their ashes, I can't scatter them. I, I have to have them 
um, in my lounge, I have to have them, you know, in my home. But I, you know, I couldn't have an animal um, preserved. If I was out walking, like in the bush, and I happened to cross, say, like um, a kiwi, uh, which would never happen because, <laughs> okay. Um, when people find out that I'm from New Zealand, I get asked quite a bit about the, the, the kiwi bird, where we get our name from. And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, it'd be so awesome to see a kiwi, you're so lucky, you know, you do, you know, go to the local park and you see little kiwi running around. Well, you, you actually don't. Um, they're only in the bush and they're only in certain parts of the bush and they're nocturnal, so you don't see them. And um, they're endangered um, as well, so they don't, there's not a huge population of them sort of just running around. But if I was out walking and I did happen to find a kiwi, my head tells me that I would want to take it and have it preserved and keep it, but my heart tells me that I would, no, 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 you wouldn't, you would return it to the earth. Um, it's a tricky one, it's a really tricky one. Um, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. I'm not against it, I, if people wanna have their animals preserved and immortalized, then hey, you know, um, I'm totally not against that at all. Um, as long as the animal, you know, you've had the animal put down because of ill health or, um, you know, it was old. Um, but no, definitely not, I'm not against that at all. I can actually remember as a kid, um, we had a family member, I can't remember who it was, whether it was an aunt or, or a cousin or whatever, but I can remember going there as a, as a little kid and they had a fawn like a, a taxidermied fawn, um, you know, a baby deer, um, and it, I mean, it was little, like it was only about, sort of, you know, that big, because I was only very, like it was only very, very young, it'd be like a few days old, and it was absolutely perfect, and it was standing on like artificial grass, I think, which was laid over wood, and I remember sitting there for ages and ages, and just patting it and stroking it, and being really, really comforted by it, um, I don't think I realised that it was real back then. I think I just thought that it was, you know, like a like a, a teddy bear or something. I don't know, but it was fashionable back in like the the late seventies, early eighties to have, you know, dead animals around the place. Um, people had like rugs with um, that they'd imported with, you know, um, you know, bear heads and their claws and that. Um, creepy, but. If it's your pet and you, you cannot be it to part with your pet um, and you have them preserved and you know they've been put down humanely and they were old or they were sick then hey um, I, I can see why I, I can definitely see why people do it. Um, killing animals for sport and then displaying them on a wall is disgusting in my opinion and my husband and I have we have heated discussions about this because he used to hunt um, way before I before we met back in his younger days and he hunted for for food um, as far as I'm aware he didn't go mounting anything <laughs> that sounds so fucking bad oh my god <laughs> sorry um, as, as far as I'm aware he didn't kill for sport like he didn't go kill a big stag and then have it preserved and have it on a wall um, I can remember going to, it was either a lodge or a pub when I was a teenager. I can't remember where it was, with my parents again. And I remember there was a, <laughs> stop laughing about that. I can remember there was a big stag, a magnificent stag. I can't remember how many points he had, but this beautiful big stag. And he was mounted above, you know, above a fireplace in this lodge or this pub. And I remember looking at it and thinking, how fucking sad it was that this this magnificent creature who was you know would have been in his own environment um, doing his thing maybe during a, during the raw um, you know in, in the mating season and some assholes come along and shot him you know for the purpose of mounting it on the wall and oh look at me look what I shot I've you know got a big dick and all this yeah, macho crap so yeah I don't agree with hunting for sport at all um, I think that is sick and I think yeah, Ugh, no, I, I'm, I'm totally against that. Um, 
having to cull animals that get overpopulated, that's a little bit different. I don't like it, but it is a necessary evil. We have um, wild horses over here called, much like you guys have the Mustangs, um, like over in Aussie and, and like over in America, um, Mustangs, Aussies don't have Mustangs, they have Brumbies, don't they? Americans have Mustangs, whatever. Um, we have the Kaimanawas and they cause a lot of damage and they, they live up in the Kaimanawa ranges and they do a cull every sort of three or four years and they try and save to their credit as many as they can and they do a big muster and people buy them and they actually make very, very good riding horses. Um, they're typically not very big, they're typically sort of full height pony size but oh, um, I digress. Um, but they do a cull and they typically try and pick off the sick ones or, or the weak ones um, to their credit but that I don't like but it is a necessary evil um, like they have duck, it's duck shooting season over here at the moment and I hate that too but that's a bit different from you know going out and shooting a magnificent stag that you've you know, stalked for hours on end you know shooting it and then you know chopping its head off and mounting it on a wall um, I'm totally against that but yeah taxiduming your pets um, yeah hey you know if, if they're into that and if, if that gives you some comfort then um, then that's awesome um, okay Bynes I want to try and keep this video short because it's like I've just about finished work and I'm so tired um, I'm gonna have a sleep in tomorrow morning but bones um, losing bone using bones in your practice this isn't isn't something that I do this is something that really intrigues me though I know um, that in some spiritual paths and in some cultures like um, Santeria I hope I've pronounced that and I haven't butchered it I hope I've pronounced it right but I know that in that and uh, is it Palo um, sorry cat I've probably completely fucked that up too but you know they they use bones and I know that they you know, bones have been in use for like uh, divination and, and fortune telling and that for years and years and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, I don't know if it's something that I would do in my practice simply because my practice is very home and hearth, it's very cottage witchery, it's very garden witchery, very green witchcraft. Um, yeah. I don't know, it intrigues me, it definitely intrigues me. I've actually got a book on my watch list that I think I'm going to buy next week. I typically buy a book for my witchy collection every couple of weeks. Well, I've started doing that. And I've seen a book called Sticks and Stones, Roots and Bones, I think. It's something like that. And I'm, I've got it on my wish list, and I think I might buy it because it's quite reasonably priced. I don't know if anyone else has heard of it, but it's hoodoo. Um, magic and I yeah that really intrigues me um, so I think I'm gonna get out and have a read um, I think if you if you're out walking in the bush or you're out tramping and you come across animal bones and you can identify what they are and you want to use them in your practice you know you want to incorporate the energy of that animal into a spell or into a ritual um, I think that's that's fine um, that's cool um, if you go out and kill an animal to use in your practice then I don't agree with that um, and I know that the pagans of old were definitely not like the pagans of you know of today us you know animal loving um, you know type type people they uh, you know life was obviously very different back then but um, you know animal sacrifice and that was fairly common you know to to you know appease gods and to ensure good crops I mean starvation was never was never far from from the door back in those days so um, I I sort of hesitate to say that I think it's for me it's wrong like to go out and, and do and like an animal sacrifice um, for my spiritual practice um, for me it's wrong for my practice it's wrong but I don't want to say that it's wrong for other practices because there are some really ancient practices that that do that sort of thing and I think it's pretty arrogant to turn around and say well I think that's you know you shouldn't do that that's wrong um, because that, that to me sort of smacks of intolerance really um, it's not something that I like and it's not something that I would do but I don't think that you can tell a culture within reason that you know something that they've practiced you know within that culture for thousands of years is now suddenly wrong sort of within reason I don't agree with bloody um, 
whale hunting. And I know that's been done for hundreds and, 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 and hundreds of years. I don't agree with that, and I don't agree with um, some forms of Chinese medicine where they where they take um, marrow, you know, bone marrow, and that out of bears and have bear farms and, and use it in their Chinese medicine and bloody badger's pubic hair or whatever. But yeah, so within reason. But um, but yeah, definitely, you know, if you if you use bones um, for whatever purpose in your practice, um, I think that's 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 kind that's cool and that that's quite interesting to me. Um, I wouldn't go buying bones offline, oh, offline, Angela, get a grip. Online, like I think that I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with people selling animal bones um, online. I sort of have the opinion, opinion that if you're meant to have animal bones, or not just animal bones, but if you're meant to have something in your practice, then that will find you, or much like, you know, um, ritual tools and stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't go seeking, oh, you know, let's do a Google search and see who's, you know, who's selling some bloody cat heads or cat skulls or whatever. Um, I think that's insulting to the animal to, um, to go selling it, I, I, you know, perhaps give it away, um, I don't know, but selling it to me is wrong, morally wrong and spiritually wrong and, and insulting to the animal, but yeah, I think if you come across them naturally and you want to use them and you know what, what, what um, animal they belong to, if you can identify the animal, then yeah, absolutely, I think that's fine, um, it, it interests me, so um, yeah, and uh, that's about all I have to say, really, um, yeah, so I'm done. Yay, got it done in one take. Whoop, whoop. Um, I'm going to get back to work and get home and have a nice cup of tea. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Uh, what is everyone doing for the weekend? What am I doing? I have got, honestly, I've got about six loads of washing on my speed bed that I need to fold and iron and put away. I've just literally, for the last almost two weeks, I've been so busy at work. I've been hanging it out on the line because over here, not many people use clothes dryers unless it's like the dead of winter where you're hanging clothes on the line to air dry. Um, and I've just literally brought them in off the line and chucked them on the spare bed. Now I've got like all this washing and I've just been picking articles out of it like as I need them for work and, and for just for school. And it's just crazy. And I've got heaps and heaps of gardening to do. My veggie garden is covered in weeds and the rabbit needs cleaning out and uh, it's just gonna be one of those weekends where I'm playing catch up on everything. Um, and hopefully I'll get some reading in because I've got some new books and I'm gonna do a video on my latest witchy um, buys. I love videos like that so I'm gonna do one. Um, and some things that I have acquired um, of late so I will get that done next week. I also have a video that I am doing hopefully hopefully next week um on my other channel bramble1976 on ritual preparation so what you do to prepare for rituals uh to prepare for spell work all that kind of thing so i keep an eye out for that and i haven't forgotten that um i also have a series i've only done two videos in it called the go natural series um i need to get my finger pulled out of my ass and start doing more videos because i've had quite a few emails from people saying please you know, post some more videos because we've tried your recipes and we really, we really love them. So I promise I will, um, I will get onto that um, as well. Okay, so have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video um, interesting. I don't know, you may not. Whatever. And I will uh, catch you later. Bye.